Hi everyone, Wendy Spanish Crafter here. Welcome to my craft room in Spain. I'm making today um, a little folio. Now I got this idea from Camellia Crafts and obviously I will link her video below. So this is just quite a rough one that I've made. It's using a 12 by 12 um, piece of paper. I've used double sided and I chose one that would sort of match with the papers I'm using. Now this these papers I think are for a freebie from Artie Mays um, and the kit I'm going to use to show you how I make it is from Cara Brandon but it's got pockets in and flippies in fact I need to glue that pocket down there which I've not done yet um, I think there's about five or six pockets let me just count them. So there's one there and you can put plain paper on there and journal or you could even add more pockets. Then it flips over and there's a pocket under there, there's a pocket under there and there's one there and there's one there. So one, two, three, four, four. I think Camellia Crafts put seven in. I'm going to go and watch her video in a minute again and just double check. So that I think is quite pretty and she uses a different closure. This is a closure uh, that I saw on GCare's site and then you could always put string round, slot it in a pocket in your journal. So the kit I'm using is Autumn Splendour from Cara. And I've already cut it all out, which I shall make little notebooks with some of it. But obviously for this one, I'm just going to use the, um, I'll use the tags to put in the pockets. And I may even put some of the pockets on the inside bit here, which I think would look quite nice as well. So I'm going to choose which papers I want. Uh, there's lots of ephemera. I've already cut it all out and I love it because it's a lot of it is sunflowers Which I just for some reason adore There's apples and I think they're plums and More different flowers pumpkins obviously Americans go in a big way for pumpkins and lovely bits that can be stuck all over this folio so let's just show you the papers let me just put these bits back into my file keep them all together uh, and i need to choose a 12 by 12 paper i did notice when i was folding that one that it did crack a little bit on the sides so i may choose a different make of paper right let's just flip through the papers that I would keep for a journal I think because of the large images I have to stop everything blowing away I've got the fan on at the side of me and that's the same this one would work and this one would work that's more for journal with lines on if you position this right that would work as well that's more journal. I just love this with the uh, little squirrel on and whatever that one is. <laughs> That's cute. Why have I got these upside down? That's more a journal. And that's just plain, so I'll probably use that one as well. So I'm just going to go off and find some uh, a 12 by 12 piece of paper that doesn't crack when I fold it so just bear with me okay what I've done is made myself a little template I've decided to use some pearlized card from Centura Centura pearl because uh, I think the um, the only dark colored card I've got is the same one that I used before and I don't want the edges cracking and I know that this doesn't crack so I've cut my piece it's just slightly under 12 by 12 inches but what I've done I've made myself a little template which will go in my reference journal so I've written on where to score so I'll do this with you in a minute 
so it's four and one eighth inches and eight and a quarter inches then give it a quarter turn and you score at three and a half inches and nine inches and then what I've also done is I've written where I glue so I've put glue six and glue six glue five and glue five so they go together then glue one and glue one and glue two glue two that goes together uh, glue three and glue four and glue seven and glue eight so I know that they all glue and I've put little notches for the pockets then I've written on how it folds so that comes down and that's going to be the back then that folds over and that folds over and that's going to be the front then you put whichever fasteners you want I don't think this is quite the same as the first one that I showed you before but I'm in the process of sticking some um, washi tape on that one oops excuse me it's all falling apart not falling apart all my glue washi tape stuck on so I'm gluing some washi tape on the seams there because it is just cracking and I hate that so I'll get on with that off camera so that's my template that will go in my reference journal and I think I've shown you my reference journal before and if I can find it I shall link the video below so now I'm going to score my card my Centura Pearl card just pick some bits up that have fallen on the floor so I don't think I can get all this on camera because it's one of the big crafters companion scoreboards and let me get my score tool under here so the first score is going to be four and one eighth that's four and one eighth all the way down oops see I've gone off line there and the next one is eight and a quarter. Then you give it a quarter turn and score at three and a half and nine. Oops, that's just moved a fraction. Let's get that out of the way. And you don't, I don't need to press these. I'm just sort of gently folding. Uh, you know, I mean, don't burnish them at this time. And the reason that I made a reference one is because at this point now you need to, because the score lines or the segments are quite similar, you know, the pieces, I need to get it right at which, where we all are, sort of. So that, now that, uh, say that piece, is the smallest piece there okay so I know that how I need to cut out so I'm going to turn the whole lot round and these score lines here these two we need to cut then because they're going to be three pockets and if you glue them now your cardboard will, will wrinkle up a bit so you just need to cut out oh my piece of paper's blowing now because I've still got the fan on so where you see your score line you just literally cut your score line out it's like a couple of millimeters see just that little piece there up to that score mark there oops sorry and then chop that off it's just so that when you fold up the pocket, it will lay flat and not push it out at that side. 
so you do the same here. I always think it's easier making yourself a template when you do anything with multi-folds. So you can keep referring back to it, make sure you're getting it correct and also you can keep it for, for when you make another one. So I'm just checking again with my piece. So there are those three folds there and I need to do the same here. So it's that one there. I think on Camellia Crafts, she said that Gail Agostinelli had made one as well. Um, so I'm going to go and watch her video after as well and see if she does it any different because everyone puts their own little twist on things don't they when they see someone's video like my first one I don't think I've got these folds in the exact correct place but like I say we all do it different so I've done these three I've done that one and now I need to do this one because they're all going to be my pockets and then I'm going to print some more of those papers, the ones that I'm going to use, which is going to take a lot of cutting and sizing up because um, I'm going to cut them to fit over all these pockets. So I'll do all that off camera because it'll just take me forever to do it. So that now is the same as my template here. So I need to cut some little what dibbits people call them I think out there oops so that's that one and I need to do three on these bottom see I've done that wrong already that's not going to be a pocket that was going to be a fasten but never mind we all make mistakes, so that should have been a straight one. So this is going to be a pocket here. And these three are going to be pockets. I just eyeball this. I don't measure it to get it exactly in the middle. So, so this is how it's going to fold. So they're all going to fold up. Now I can score it. So we're going to put glue on here, so they'll fold up. We're going to put glue on here, so that'll fold up. Then this is going to fold that way, I think. <laughs> That's going to be glued there. That's going to be... Have I got this right? See, I have to keep referring back to that. So that's my three pockets. That's going to fold there. Does that fold in? That's going to be the front. That folds in there. And that's going to be the back. Right. I think I've got it. <laughs> so that's going to be the front. And that folds that way. So let's just burnish that one down. So that's the front and I'm going to put a little pencil mark or a pen just on there. So that's the front, very lightly, but I'll be covering all that up with pattern paper anyway. So turn it over, that's going to be glued down, that folds in there and you see that needs a fraction more because when I fold it, it's pushing it out there. So I'm going to put cut a bit more off that piece there just so that the pocket lies flat. So when that folds in, it will fold flat. So that folds in there, and that folds down. And I'm going to do the same with these because that is catching on there. Just another millimetre or two because this card is quite stiff as well the one I used first was um, 
not card really it was more a thick paper so that should fold flat now yeah see that's still not right that's going to be the back go back to my template and start again so that's the front that folds that way so we're there folds that way then that folds over there like that one that pocket folds there front aha so that's what I'm doing wrong that folds that way inside there and that Right, so that's the back. See why it's good to make a template? So that's the back, and you put a fastener on there. That's the front, and you put a fastener on there. And that opens out, and you've got another pocket there. And then you can always put pockets, which I will do, in there. Right, I'm going to go off and cut, print some more paper first, and cut them all to size and I'll come back when I've glued all those on. Okay I'm back now I've done all the cutting of the papers I used two full sheets of the patterned paper and part of another one so about two and a third so I've that's all my one side and the other side and because I wanted this lovely squirrel on um, they're going to be glued up so that's going to be when you open I've got to fathom out some way to hide this bit where I made a mistake there uh, so I'm just going to glue the pockets um, I've rounded those two and I didn't round that one and I don't know why so I'll have to leave it now because I haven't rounded my paper and I hate rounding the cardboard when I haven't rounded the paper to match so I'm just running a bead of glue along the edge there. Um, I'm using some Cosmic Shimmer glue today. Uh, I got this from the craft shop, my local craft shop. They do get it in occasionally and I do like it because it is quite a, a quick, it grips quite quickly and it's good and strong. Uh, this pocket I've rounded the corner at the top. Now let's, once I've done this glue in, I can show you how it looks. And I've got to think of a way to hide that other than um, sticking something right across it. I'm not sure. I'll have to think of some sort of fastener that may just hide it silly mistake by not following my template properly really but we all make mistakes and I'm sure we all think of ways of covering them up and I've not rounded the corners on this one either so It didn't take me quite as long as I thought it would do doing all the cutting for the uh, to hide everything. Right, I think they're all glued. Now this is going to be the front. This is the back. So that folds in that way. So we've got a pocket there. Then that folds down, and we're going to fasten there and we're going to fasten there and then that folds so I need to fathom out a way of hiding that mess I wonder if there's anything in the ephemera that would let's have a look through all this see that says fall memories so what I could do is stick that onto a piece of craft card and then glue that over the front 
I've got some pieces of card in here. Right, that's what I'm going to do. Let's get my scissors. Just make it to fit that piece of card. Yeah. So that can glue onto that piece of card and that will hide my mistake. <laughs> One way of doing it. Let's just... Should I put it that way then it stands out a bit more? Didn't show up very well against the dark background. I'll just ink the edges. In fact, that doesn't look terribly straight. Let me just put it on my guillotine that I keep at the side of me. Trim that off. And I'll trim that side as well because it's not equal to that one. Right, let's just ink those edges. I've not inked any of this on here. So I'm going to... Actually, what I might do is put some twine under there before I glue it then I can put a a circle there on a brad I'll use a small one so I don't want to hide the butterfly and put one here That's, then I can wrap the twine round there and round there and that will be the fasten yeah, so I'm going to get some twine out my stash that I keep at the side here. Let me just find some. I have a drawer at the side and I have all sorts of bits of threads. That's probably too orange. That's too white. Even though I've got a load of it string that'll do we'll use some string so I need to leave plenty to wrap round so if I just right I'm going to stick that on there and what I will do is put a piece of this um, fine liner tape that's nice and strong I'll put some glue on as well but this will just hold the twine for now let's find my pokey tool doesn't want to come off it's just sticking out fractionally let me just Cut that little end off there. Right, and then I'll put the twine on and put some glue on as well. Then stick that over where I've made my mistake. And I'm just going to put a clip on it to hold it tight. So that can wrap round a circle there and that one round there. And I'll do the same there. Right, I'll just go and get some more circles and some brads. Okay, I've realised I've made a couple of mistakes really. This is the back. And I realised when I was trying to put my fasten on that I'd got a pocket there. So what I should have done was put my brad through before I put my po glued my pocket and then put some micropore tape over the top, but I didn't. So the way I got round it was I found an image piece of ephemera and I stuck that on. Then I put one of the larger circles with a smaller circle and attached it so that the twine goes between the small and the large circle. And the same here. Um, so that fastens round like that. Then on the front, where we've already put the twine through 
that to hide that mistake. I'm all right there because I can put the brad through there and what I've done, I've inked another small circle to hide the brad ends there. So we'll do that. Let me just put a little hole. Uh, no, I don't need a hole in that one. I'm not, not thinking straight at the moment. Right, let's put that through there. Then I need to put it through there. So I need a hole and I don't want to hide too much of my butterfly up. So, but I want it fairly middle, right? It's about there. So stick that through. There, open the legs out, and I'm hoping that this small circle will just about cover them. There, yeah, so I can glue that on there, and it'll look like the little squirrel's holding a little nut. <laughs> there. So I've got the same problem with the bottom piece because I've already glued the pocket down. So I must make a note of that on the template to put your brad fasteners on before you glue your pockets down. So what I need to do is find another piece of ephemera. See, that can go. Should I put one each end? Yes, that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to tie a knot because this is quite thick string do it that way that one could tie a little bow there to be honest couldn't we or should I do it at the top <laughs> let's do it at the top see how it looks it might look daft or it might look okay yeah let's leave it like that I always associate string with harvest time when I used to go to live out in the country and all the combines would be out and they'd be tying all the bales up with twine. Now I need something to hide my brad down there. Yeah, that will be fine. So what I'm going to do is glue that on how did I do that one? Yeah, I put it through there and then glued it down. If you make mistakes, there's always some way around it, somewhere, somehow, somewhere. So let's glue this on and then all I have to do is decide which tags I'm going to use. So that can go, yeah, on there. Top on my glue. Oops. And then that can just wrap around there. So that's the front. Let's get rid of that. That's the front. That's the back. That's the inside. And a pocket there. And a pocket there. And on the back there's two pockets one in there and one in there so I'll just go through my ephemera and prepare some tags and put some uh, holes in for the tabs at the top and sort something out okay I'm just putting the last of the bits on the tags I've had to choose the smaller out of the tags because the larger ones were too tall so I've cut some of my um, quilt cover and frayed all the edges and then I'm just attaching it with a staple 
lovely copper coloured staples I found in the china store and I flattened the back with my pokey tool and then all I've done is just added one more piece of ephemera there and another piece here to make a pocket so I've got a pocket there turn it over we've got one there and that just fits in fact I'm just going to trim a fraction off the bottom then it'll go in and it won't catch on the on the edge I'm not bothered about the material sticking out but that's so and I've got a pocket there one there and one there so I'll put two tags in that one We've got one, two, three, four, five pockets. I think on Camellia Craft she had six or seven. Um, so I don't know quite what I've done different. But like I say, we all do our own take on the inspiration we see on YouTube. And I always like to give credit to people um, where who I get my inspiration from. So... Um, I'm really quite happy with this and I love this kit it's really really pretty but mostly because of these sunflowers so that let's just work this out again that's the front so that fastens around there this is the back and that folds in there yeah that's it takes a bit of working out but once you've got it so that's the back and then that all folds in so if you want you could put a piece in fact a piece of that might do to tie it all round together let's just yeah we could use that let's just make sure we catch it all in tie it in a little bow at the side And then it all matches in together with the tops of the tabs tags let's just make that a little bit smaller and these bits won't go to waste because they'll go in my scrap box and there we go i think that looks quite nice so yeah really happy with that and you could put all sorts in you could make it large you know fatter um obviously put more in the pockets put little notebooks in um, so yeah I'm really happy with that so I think during September Cara has got 50% off this kit if I'm not mistaken so the link will be below in the description box but I think it's only during September so um, you need to hop over there and take a look and I shall see you next time so thanks for joining me today. Bye.